Last week, COVID hit me hard, and I'm still feeling a little bit under the weather. But it gave me some unexpected free time. And of course, I used it to tinker around in Premiere a little, because clearly I don't spend enough time in there. Anyhow, I found five awesome transitions, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to make them. Alright, so the first one is gonna be zooming in on a specific object and then using it to transition to another clip. So in Premiere, drag in your clips with the first one overlapping the second. Then set a cut at the moment where you want the transition to start. Duplicate the right side of the clip one track up. With the top layer selected, go to the effect controls and find opacity. In here, click the pen tool to create a mask and go to the program monitor. Draw a mask around your object, in my case a coffee mug. And try to do this very precisely. After closing the mask, you can leave the feather the way it is. You can always come back and adjust it afterwards. Now, back in the timeline, right-click the clip we just masked and find Nest. Call it Masked Mug or something. We're doing this because otherwise the effects we're gonna apply won't work properly. Now, in the effects library, find the transform effect and drag it on the nested sequence. Then go to the effect controls. Find the transform effect and set a position and scale keyframe. Then move about 10 frames for Further and scale the mug up until it can cover the vertical part of your screen. Now move the position of the mug to the left side so that the edge is completely covered as well. Now move about 10 frames further again and set a new keyframe. Again, 10 frames further in time and move the position of the mug all the way to the right until it disappears. Now we're gonna expand the velocity curves of the position and scale property. Then we're gonna ease out the first keyframe by pulling its lever. Then pull the lever of the second keyframe to ease the animation in. Now head over to the scale curves and do the exact same thing in here. Next, select the third position keyframe and pull the lever to ease the animation out. Leave the last keyframe linear. Now scroll down a little and set the shutter angle to 180 degrees to create motion blur. Lastly, move the player to the spot of the third keyframe. That is very important for later. So this is what we already have. Okay, now in the effect library, find the crop effect and drag it on the original layer. Then with the clip selected, go to the effect effect controls. Set a left property keyframe on the moment you left the play at. Now move further in time to the moment where the mug is just out of frame. Then select the crop effect and move the left property all the way to the right to make the background disappear. Lastly, expand the velocity curves and ease the first keyframe in by pulling the lever. There you go, that looks beautiful. It's time for transition number two, the advanced split transition. We're gonna create a split transition from the first to the second clip. To do that, set the playhead to the end of the first clip and move about 15 frames back in time. Then set a cut. Move the clip one track up and drag the second clip underneath it. Now select the top clip and head to the effect controls. In here, find opacity and click the pen tool to create a mask. Next, you want to create a diagonal line from the bottom left to the top right. Then close your mask up like this. Really important, set the mask feather to zero. Next, in a timeline, hold down Alt and drag your clip one track up to duplicate it. Then in the effect controls, find your mask and invert it. Now back in the timeline, right click your clip and choose nest. Do the same thing for the other clip. Again, we're doing this because otherwise the next step will not work. In the effects library, find the transform effect and drag it on both the nested sequences. Then with the first one selected, go to the effect controls and move the playhead to the first frame of the clip. Now set a position keyframe, grab the playhead and move to the end of the clip. Then move the position of the clip to the outside. Next, back in the effect controls, move the player to the middle of the animation. Then move the position back a little closer to the start position. Then expand the velocity curves of the position property. Now select the first two keyframes and right click them. Go to temporal interpolation and click on ease in. Right click the keyframes again, temporal interpolation and choose ease out. You now see what happens to these curves. We're gonna pull the lever of the first keyframe to ease it out and then select the second keyframe and pull the lever of that one as well. Same thing for the other side of the keyframe. That already looks beautiful. Now in a timeline, do the exact same thing for the second nested sequence. Just make sure it goes to the other direction. And there you go. It's time to create this pyramid and this car transition. But if you want to speed up your creative process, you should use the Storyblocks plugin. You can literally click and download an animation preset, transitions or stock videos straight from the plugin and boom. It'll just take you a few seconds. Storyblocks, Thank you 
so much for sponsoring this video. Imagine you dropped your camera off a cliff, trying to get the perfect nature shot. Yeah, in that case, you should have used Storyblocks. Storyblocks' curated stock library has everything you need to create high quality video in one place. With over a million 4K and HD footage, templates, music, sound effects, images, and more. You can download unlimited high quality assets at one predictable subscription cost, so you can say goodbye to pay-per-clip pricing. Enhance your social media videos by accessing exclusive Storyblocks label music tracks directly in TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Storyblocks will keep you protected from copyright strikes so that you can focus on what really matters creating. Besides that, you can save hours by using the pre-made motion graphic templates for After Effects, Premiere Pro, Apple Motion and DaVinci Resolve. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to starblocks.com slash Premiere Basics or just click the link down below. Now let's create some awesome transitions. Okay, the car transition. First, drag this second clip on top of the first clip to the moment that you want the transition to start. Then set a cut at the moment the transition will be complete, something about 20 frames further. Now move the player to the first frame of the clip and then with it selected, go to the effect controls and here go to opacity and click the pen tool. Now create a mask around the car. This doesn't have to be super precise. Feather the mask a Lot, so blend it in with the video. Now that that's done, go back to the timeline and move two frames further. Then add a cut. Move two frames further again and add another cut. Keep doing that until you're at the end of the clip. Now remove every other clip in between to create this flickering effect. Now it's time to polish it. First, go to the second clip and head over to the effect controls. And here, adjust the mask a little bit to make the car fit your video. Then go back to the timeline and do that for all of your clips. When you're done, your result will already look great. But to enhance it even more, select all the small clips and nest them. Then in the effects library, find the Gaussian blur effect and drag it on the nested sequence. Head over to the effect controls and make sure the playhead is on the first frame of the clip. Then increase the blurriness until the car is barely visible. Click the blurriness stopwatch icon to set a keyframe. Now just move towards the end of the clip and reset the blurriness back to zero. And there you go. It's time for transition number four, the pyramids. This one is actually very simple. So you have your two clips right here. First, duplicate your clip one track up. Then move the player to the first frame of the clip and right click it. Then choose add frame hold. Now this part is just one frozen clip. Drag it on top of the first clip and trim it to be around 40 frames long. When that's done, make sure the clip is selected and go to the effect controls. Then click the pen tool to create a mask and then make a selection around one of your objects in the video. Let's start with the sand for example. Also when your mask is closed, set the feather to zero. Now back in the timeline, duplicate the clip and go back to the effect controls. Now remove the mask and create a new one. This time draw a selection around another object, for example one of your pyramids. Do exactly that for all the objects in your video, until everything is selected. Next, put all of the clips in the timeline into a nested sequence separately. Again we're doing that so that the effect we're gonna use will actually work. Go to the effects library and find the transform effect. Drag it on the first nested sequence. We're gonna start with one, so let me hide the other layers for now. With the first one selected, go to the effect controls and create a position animation to make the object appear on screen. It really doesn't matter how you animate it, it's however you like. Just make sure to ease in the keyframes just like you learned before. And then of course increase the shutter angle to add some motion blur. Do this for all of the nested sequences and that will result in a transition like this. For the fifth transition, you guys gotta learn some animating and you can do that right here in the next lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching.